Okay, so in this video, we're going to be looking at a special case of factorizing called the difference of two squares, which I often simplify to dots, difference of two squares. So we're going to see if we can spot some patterns in things that look like this, where you have like a letter plus a number and then a letter minus the same number. Letter plus a number, letter minus the same number, as you can see just happening there. And this time I've got the minus and then the plus, but it's the same thing, it's just written the other way around. So when we expand these brackets, you get your x times x, which is x squared, your x times minus 3, which is minus 3x, your 3 times x, which is plus 3x, and then your minus 9 that you've got here. Now when you do negative 3x plus 3x, you just get 0x, which just means they cancel out. So we can just say that this is x squared minus 9. Okay, next one will go a little bit quicker. We're going to have a squared minus 4a plus 4a, and then you get minus 16. The 4a and the 4a, sorry, the minus 4a and the 4a cancel out, which leaves you with just a squared minus 16. We're going to see if we can do these last patterns. So y times y is y squared. The y times 7 is 7y. The minus 7 times y is minus 7y, and these two are minus 49. Now, those are going to cancel, which is going to leave us with just y squared minus 49. Now, we're going to see what the pattern is. The reason these ones in the middle are always cancelling is because when you add these numbers together, you're always getting zero. And when you multiply them, we're always getting these numbers at the end. So I guess, really, we could think about all of these as secretly having this extra term in the middle that we never write down, there's actually technically like a 0x and a 0a and a 0y. So if we were to factorize these, we would be thinking of th two things that multiply to minus 9 but add to 0. Well, that would be 3 and minus 3 because they add to 0 and they multiply to minus 9. Two things that multiply to minus 16 and add to 0. Two things that multiply to minus 49 and add to 0. And this is how they would factorize. But we never have these bits written in the middle. So because we don't have those bits written in the middle, we need to recognize these things that we've got as something that is called the difference of two squares. Now, the reason it's the difference of two squares is, well, first of all, there's this symbol in the middle, which is subtract. And we know that subtract means difference. And then we have here, this is a square because it is something that has been squared. And then this number at the end is also a square number. This is a square number. So it's called the difference of two squares because it is literally the difference between two squares. So this means that we can factorize expressions that look like this. Well, whatever this first thing was, it appears in the bracket there. So whatever this one, this was x squared, it's going to appear at the beginning in this kind of bracket setup. We're going to have an x here, and we know we're going to have an x here. Now here's the important part. This was 9. It was a minus 9, and it was a 3 and a minus 3. And the square root of 9 is 3. The square root of 16 was 4, and the square root of 49 is 7. So if it was a y squared, the square root of y squared is just y. So it would be an x plus y, x minus y. If we expanded this, we would get x squared minus xy plus xy minus y squared. And just like before, those ones cancel out. And you get left with this kind of um, this case that we've got here. So if you have something that looks like this, you can factorize it into these brackets where you have a, the something plus and the something minus. So I'm going to do these five and then you're going to have a quick go. They're pretty straightforward here. So the standard form says that x squared minus y squared is going to be x plus y, x minus y. So first one, it is going to be an x plus 3 and an x minus 3. The square root of that is x and the square root of 9 is 3. We have a squared minus 16. That's going to be an a plus 4 and an a minus 4 because the square root of 16 is 4. So in this case, you can see how it mirrors this pattern that we've got here. y squared minus 100. Well, the square root of 100 is 10, so it's going to be a y plus 10 and a y minus 10. You need to know your square numbers pretty well here. So the square root of 225 is 15, so we've got x plus 15, x minus 15. And here, 1 is a square number, so you can just write this as a plus 1 and a minus 1. Pause the video and see if you can do these ones following that same pattern. Okay, so this one is just going to be an x plus 8 and x minus 8 because the square root of 64 is 8. 
this will be a y plus 4 and a y minus 4. This is going to be an a plus 2 and an a minus 2 because the square root of 4 is 2. And then here we have got a y plus 5 and a y minus 5. Now this last one cannot be factorized because it has a plus. I'm hoping that this one, you've noticed it's a bit of a trick question. This one doesn't factorize. And it doesn't factorize because it doesn't have a difference. If it was x squared minus 36, it would be x plus 6, x minus 6. But because it's called the difference of two squares, that one doesn't work. Okay, I'm going to continue with this difference of two squares theme just to make it a little bit more challenging. We're going to do some trickier challenges that we've got here. So this is definitely only going to be in higher. So if you're doing the foundation tier, you don't need to look at this. So I've said we know this pattern that we've got here. So we could also do it if it looks like kind of flipped around or in a slightly different order. So whatever you do, you square root the first one and you square root the second one and put it in the brackets. So I'll square root the first one and then I'll square root the second one. And then I'm going to do the same thing, but with a negative. I'll square root the first one to get 5, and I'll square root the second one to get q. Obviously, the square root of q squared is just q. And then I'll do the same, but with negative. Now, I'm going to do the square root of this. I'm going to think what times is by itself to get that, and it's going to be x, y. And now I'm going to do the square root of this. What multiplies by itself to get this? Well, the 16 will give me a 4, and then there'll also be a z. Now that I've got that, I can just do the same bracket, but with a subtraction. The square root of the 4 is going to be 2, and the square root of the a squared is a. The square root of the 25 is 5, and the square root of the b squared is b. So it's just going to be the same pattern, but with the negative in. So have a go at these questions here, pause the video, and see if you get the same as me. Okay, so the 1 is going to square root to a 1. And the square root of 4a squared, what times what gives you 4a squared? It's going to be 2a. So it's going to be 1 plus 2a, 1 minus 2a. The 100 will give me the 10. And the p squared will give me the p. So it's 10 plus, 10 plus p, 10 minus p. You can always expand them and check if they're right. Now, a squared, b to the 4. That's just going to be a, b squared. Obviously, a, b squared times a, b squared is a squared, b to the 4. And then it's going to be a plus 7 from the 49 and a minus 7 in the second bracket. So the last one that we've got here, we are going to do the 64x squared. Well, that's going to be an 8x when it's square roots. And the 36y squared is going to be a 6y like this. And then we're going to say again that we'll have an 8x plus 6y. Now later on, I'm going to show you that this is not fully factorized. There is something more that we could have done to this question because there is actually a common factor. You could take a factor of 2 out of this and a 2 out of this. But for now, we're just going to leave this and say that this is factorized with the difference of two squares. But this is not fully factorized. And in the last video in this playlist, you'll have a look at some things like that as well. Okay, next thing we're going to do is factorizing expressions that have a common bracket in the hope of being able to do some more challenging stuff. Found this video helpful? Then why not drop it a like and consider subscribing to my channel. If you'd like the next video in the playlist, you can click here to be taken straight to it. And as always, wishing you the very best for all your studies.